Hey everybody, uh, good morning. Uh, we are live here in Salida. Uh, we're waiting for the um, um, hearing to start here. Uh, I've got a couple of interesting things uh, that uh, I've discovered and, and that I wanna share with everybody. So uh, I just wanna say hi to everybody and uh, thanks first of all, all of our mods who have jumped here in here, Miss Sophia and um, everybody. We're grateful for all of you. Uh, Hi, Lauren, the file, uh, Gary, Blue Velvet, Charmaine. Um, it's great to great to see everyone. So we're going to uh, we're going to have the uh, the hearing up here in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're waiting for that to start in about six minutes. But before that, I just want to let everybody know uh, this morning uh, there was a motion to seal uh, the arrest warrant. Uh, and what that does, uh, the attorneys obviously have to argue uh, why uh, that would be necessary uh, for Barry. And by the way, just to make sure our sound's working correctly, if you can give me uh, a one that you can hear correctly uh, and that everybody can hear me so I know uh, that this is working um, correctly here. Okay, good. All right, awesome. So, here are some of the points uh, that uh, the they're going to argue uh, this morning. So one is they're extremely concerned that Barry is a flight risk uh, from the United States. Uh, in this motion, uh, he uh, the um, court is going to hear arguments that he sold uh, all of it. He's liquidated all of his properties uh, here in this uh, in the Salida, you know, Poncho Springs, uh, Maysville area. That means everything, uh, according to the um, um, motion. He's liquidated all of his property. Um, and Dylan, let's uh, put up the other the other side. Uh, I see they're at the courthouse. Okay, not yet. <laughs> Dylan's like not yet. Oh, you, my guy. Um, so that's one thing. He's also. Uh, limited working all of his subcontracting businesses uh, here in uh, Colorado. Uh, he recently purchased, uh, a, the the motion says he recently purchased several new vehicles uh, in the area, which raised, um, you know, some suspicion. Uh, he also has moved, uh, this is a fascinating one, he's moved his Bobcat to Indiana. Okay. Now, that, and that's his bread and butter. Now, I, I reported the other day that I knew he was in Indiana uh, and uh, he was working up there um, and it looks like the hearing here. So if they start speaking, I'm gonna go right by right to the hearing. Okay, so they're, they're still trying to figure it out over there. I don't know if the court's gonna have the bandwidth uh, to carry uh, all the people that are probably going to be on this hearing uh, from various different directions. Uh, but that said, uh, so he took his um, Bobcat to Indiana, and now here's another interesting piece. Uh, he There is information that he was thinking and has been moving towards um, pulling the plug from this area 100% and headed towards Arizona. Uh, now, I find that's uh, a fascinating uh, piece of this puzzle right now uh, that is coming together. So uh, we, I, I can tell you that uh, he, his house is sealed. Uh, they have put uh, sealing tape on the doors. And like I mentioned yesterday, they went over there. They did a search. Um, and most of the, uh, what you're seeing on the, uh, the hearing here, uh, it's coming in and out, is at their end. It's not at our end. Uh, I think they're trying to deal with the bandwidth uh, problems. Uh, that said, um, I will keep you posted because I, I'm into the hearing just in case uh, they have some bandwidth problems. I will tell you uh, what's going on. So so here's here's basically what's probably going to happen. There's going to be a couple things argued uh, today by the DA. Uh, and my understanding, he may have a court appointed uh, defense attorney for now. Uh, it doesn't look like he's retained, uh, you know, some powerhouse up out here in Colorado. 
um, and so what they're going to argue is bond uh, and then the DA is going to argue uh, whether or not uh, he's a flight risk uh, and if that's the case of course uh, he's uh, you know the court's going to have to weigh out whether or not uh, they let him uh, out uh, where he could potentially flee so they've already put it in their motion uh, to um, basically uh, you know seal the arrest warrant uh, because he is an, uh, an ongoing, uh, ex and, and it says, extremely concerned that Barry is a flight risk, quote unquote. Uh, so, uh, and the other side of this, obviously, is the investigation is still fluid, uh, even as last night. Um, and so they went over to his house. Uh, they conducted um, a, a search into his residence. That's probably incident to his arrest. Uh, that's what we call that. Uh, they probably went to the court last night, got a search warrant uh, to go into this house, uh, anticipating they would potentially uh, look for uh, evidence uh, that would connect him to Susan's, uh, Suzanne's disappearance and her and or her demise. Now, remember, uh, in the in our system, uh, he is innocent till proven guilty. Uh, it, it doesn't mean there wasn't probable cause to arrest him and or that they don't they didn't think that he is responsible. Uh, it's just now our court system has to work. And I hope you can see the, um, the hearing there uh, with folks coming in. Um, so there may be other individuals as well that they're looking at. Uh, I'm hearing uh, and getting information that 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 is potentially a possibility. Uh, I don't know that for sure. So um, I do know they are looking specifically at some other folks. Uh, who those are, who those people are, uh, I'm not going to uh, put it out here right now. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, movement still going uh, pretty quickly uh, on this case. So um, that said, uh, it looks like they're getting ready uh, to go here. And uh, as soon as they come on, uh, like uh, yesterday, I will um, let everybody uh, hear uh, what's going on uh, in the courthouse here. Um, so we've got a lot of things. Uh, okay, are they, are they, have they started speaking? And Judge, before the proceedings begin, I, I do have um, a motion. Well, I guess the beginning of proceedings before media coverage begins. I do have a request for the court regarding media coverage and the court's order before it is uh, allowed and, and before it's implemented. Okay, so you want to address that before the camera is turned on? Yes, sir. And with Mr. Morphew here? Yes, sir. All right, so I think we're ready for Mr. Morphew. I'll get my robe and enter in a moment. So I'll, I will tell you. I need to hear this request and then I'll what you're hearing in the background this is a webex so folks that are coming into this WebEx have not muted their mics. Uh, so we're, well, let's cross our fingers we get the court uh, and that other folks that are listening will mute their mics. So let's cross our fingers. The other thing that they're waiting for now uh, is this could be a video appearance from the jail uh, where Barry's being held. Uh, so we may have a, a video feed on Barry. Um, and then, of course, um, you know, he's going to uh, enter a plea. Um, and obviously from that point, the, the court will hear arguments about whether or not he should um, uh, get bond uh, and those types of things. So uh, this is a fluid situation. And so let's go ahead and uh, Dylan, let's go ahead and just let it play and uh, pull me out of this and uh, we'll hear what goes on. Thanks for being here, everybody.
Oh, there he is. Thank you all. Please be seated. Good morning uh, to everybody that's in the courtroom, uh, to everybody that is on the WebEx call. This is Patrick Murphy. I am the Chief Judge of the 11th Judicial District. I'm speaking to you from the District Courtroom in the JP County Courthouse in Salida, Colorado. We have one case on the 10th people versus Barry Morphew. The case number is 21CR78. Mr. Morphew appears in custody with his attorneys, Ms. Rosa, Mr. Zettler, appearing in the courtroom for the people. Deputy District Attorneys, Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Pembleton. Yeah. Stanley is on WebEx, we confirm. Okay, apparently also on the WebEx call is the District Attorney, Ms. Stanley. Uh, among other things, we are here for an advisement. However, I am aware from a pre-trial or pre-hearing discussion that Mr. Zettler wanted to put something on the record regarding the recent order uh, on expanded media coverage. So as of now, for the record, the camera that is in the courtroom uh, is not on. Mr. Zettler. Thank you, Judge. Objection at this point and our basis for asking the court to reconsider the ruling, uh, the order that was issued today is based on the arguments we made. Um, but in addition, we are asking the court to deny the request as untimely. The procedure is noted under chapter 38, rule three of the Colorado court rules. They do provide 
more expanded media coverage, but under subsection 6A, note that request for expanded media coverage, a written request shall be submitted to the judge at least one day before expanded media coverage is requested to begin. And in this case, um, the request media coverage, at least based on the notice I received, was not received until 3.24 p.m. on May 5th, which would not be at least one day prior to this hearing. We would argue that the interpretation of that language should be I, um, simple due process notice issues under the U.S. and Colorado Constitution rule uh, allows for an objection to be filed by any party or witness under subsection 6B uh, with the judge objection. Um, given the, the short nature of the and being less than one day, counsel did not have an opportunity to file a specific written objection to the request for expanded media coverage, uh, including uh, the grounds for that objection and including additional um, orders from the court, such as allowing Mr. Morphy to appear in civilian clothes in the courtroom so that his image uh, in jail attire and shackles would not be across the, the public in the face of the There's a way of doing it, but I don't know how, how because Tyler just sent me a note and he's asking you to do something technical. For those of you that are on the WebEx call, specifically somebody talking from a device named Terry, you need to mute your devices. Thank you. Nothing further, Judge. Thank you. All right. I appreciate that argument. Um, Mr. Zettler, let me mute this phone just a second. Uh, I appreciate uh, your argument. Obviously, there's a number of things that we're bumping into. First of all, the requirement under Rule 5 that I get the advisement uh, completed as soon as uh, reasonably, uh, as soon as I reasonably can, which would be Mr. Morphy was arrested yesterday. So I wanted to get him advised as soon as possible. Therefore, there is a short period of time for expanded media requests to be made. Uh, advisements are specifically listed under the rule as the types of hearings where expanded media coverage is allowed. Uh, second, I believe that the uh, defense uh, was able to articulate, in my opinion, a very well-argued, well-reasoned, and well-researched objection uh, prior to this hearing <clears throat> that is on the record. So uh, I think the, the record's been made, but I will uh, continue with the written order that I issued a uh, half hour Ago, a half hour or so ago. So I will allow the cam camera to be turned on with the limitations that are in the expanded media coverage order. All right, the first thing I need to do here, Mr. Morphew, is make sure you're uh, aware of your rights. First of all, you do have the right to remain silent and any statement you make could be used against you. You have the right to have an attorney to represent you. While you are in custody, I could automatically appoint the public defender's office to represent you. And in fact, they have entered their appearance on your behalf. Any plea you make in this case must be voluntary. You are currently being held uh, without, bail, without bail pursuant to statute. You are being investigated for three charges, first degree murder, tampering with evidence and attempt to influence a public official. With regard to those charges, you do have the right to have a trial. That trial could be to a judge or to a jury. That would be your choice. You have a right to have that trial within six months of your request. At that trial, you would be presumed innocent and it would be the burden of the prosecutor to prove the charges beyond a reasonable doubt before you could be convicted. You could testify or not at that trial. That would be solely your decision. If you decided not to testify, I would specifically instruct the jury that they could not hold that decision against you. You could question any witnesses called by the prosecution, and you could call witnesses by subpoena if necessary in your own defense. You could also appeal the outcome of the trial if you did not agree with it. 
you are entitled to a preliminary hearing. Mr. Morphew, did you hear and understand those rates? Yes, sir. Did you have any questions about them? No, sir. And are you affirmatively requesting that I appoint the public defender's office at this point to represent you? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, they have entered their appearance. So by election, I will also appoint them due to Mr. Morphew's request. All right, we've had some discussion uh, prior to this uh, hearing about issues to be addressed. I know one of those is a protection order. Uh, so I will ask the people, what is their request? Judge, we met with the young ladies, uh, the two daughters, Mr. Morphew and Ms. Morphew. And at this time, we are not asking for a protection order. We uh, have no objection to allowing for civil contact between um, them at their discretion. Okay, so are you asking that I issue a protection order that, it, or, but that it be civil contact? Judge. Okay, any objections? No, Your Honor. Mr. Morphew, I will enter a protection order that will allow you to have contact with Mallory and Macy Morphew. The caveat is that that contact has to be civil, so you can't uh, threaten, harass, or annoy. If you were to do that, and if you were in violation of that protection order, you could be charged with an additional offense. It's a class one misdemeanor called violation of a protection order. Do you understand? Okay. What else from the people? Judge, we intend on having charges filed within 10 days. And we also accept the next court date. I think the court had uh, pre-scheduled for May 27th. Uh, we don't have anything further. Well, actually we do have one thing further, Judge. Um, for the record, Mr. Walker provided public defender investigator a thumb drive uh, with the uh, probable cause affidavit uh, for the arrest. Okay, pursuant to the pre-hearing discussion, the prosecution did not have an objection to releasing the affidavit for arrest uh, to the defense. It sounds like that has been accomplished. The district attorney has ordered charges filed in this case within 10 days of today. All your evidence is a court. I know it's very simple. There is no case. Gerard, we just laid it out for you. How about the fact he never hit his brakes? Ms. Zettler. Judge, those are all correct statements. We did receive um, a thumb drive with the probable cause affidavit uh, for review. We do agree to that setting. Waive any further advisement of uh, rights. Uh, we would also ask that uh, on the next hearing date, the court be prepared to consider preliminary motions filed by the defense. We will file those in a timely manner, at least seven days prior to that hearing. All right, and I, I, we discussed the uh, prosecution getting you the discovery to the extent that they can in the next 21 days. I believe we agreed on May 26th? 27th, I believe, Judge. Okay, May 27th, that's correct. Mr. Zettler is in another hearing at four o'clock. Okay, then is there anything else from the prosecution? No, sir, not from us. Mr. Zettler. Judge, we of course are expecting that the prosecution will comply with their obligations under Rule 16 um, in terms of their mandatory discovery obligations within 21 days. Of today being the advisement uh, pertaining to discovery um, that is listed under uh, subsections uh, A1. One Roman numeral. I'm sorry, Roman numeral seven. Yeah, I suppose uh, that they will do so. It's self-executing. Executing. 
Okay, then if there's nothing else, uh, Mr. Morphew, I will see you again the afternoon of May 27th at four o'clock. Thank you, court will be in recess. All right. <laughs>
this uh, situation is uh, moving uh, very quickly. Uh, and my uh, experience tells me uh, they have additional stuff that they're holding close to the chest. Uh, but uh, I think within the next couple, three, four, maybe a week, uh, we'll start seeing additional evidence uh, coming to the surface. Um, I know that the gal that he was dating uh, has gone MIA uh, in the area. She's probably still around, but she's laying low. Uh, I know who she is. I'm not going to call her out here, uh, but you know she's been dating him now close to uh, at least six, seven months. Uh, there's you know possible uh, information that she had been a little bit longer than that, but uh, at this point, uh, I'm not. I cannot confirm that. So. Uh, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Uh, I'm, uh, I can tell you, though, that she is definitely uh, laying low. And I'm assuming she's uh, been uh, you know, repositioning herself and processing uh, what just took place yesterday morning. I can also tell you, uh, last night, the uh, PD was at Barry's house. Uh, they have sealed his residence. Uh, what that means is they have red tape on the door. Uh, and that means nobody can come in or come out. Uh, there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, either one, uh, they are obtaining the warrant, or excuse me, they're returning uh, the warrant receipt. That's where if they collect that evidence, they have to bring it back to the court. And then the court can say, okay, you can open that residence back up. They're also preventing the girls from going back into that residence. Uh, for what reasons, we don't know. Uh, but that would be another reason. It would also prevent the girlfriend from going back into that residence. Um, it would also prevent if other family members, uh, you know, on either side wanted to go into that residence, that would prevent that. So they had an officer uh, stage at the door. Uh, he uh, was, uh, you know, preventing uh, people from coming and going uh, even near the residence last night. And as you can imagine, as this case uh, starts to get um, bigger and bigger, uh, the media is going to descend on this area, um, you know, in, in large droves. Um, again, you know, the search is on for Suzanne's um, body. Uh, I'm not convinced uh, there might be additional information coming uh, that would uh, lead uh, some type of indication of, um, you know, where she could be located. I don't necessarily believe it's coming from Barry. I believe there may be additional information coming from the side uh, that will point them into that. Uh, I've also discovered uh, there is a location here in town where Barry bought a large amount of chlorine. Uh, and so I, I can confirm uh, that is a, um, uh, a piece of this puzzle as well. Uh, I'm assuming at this point that that was the chlorine smell not only in the house, but up in the res uh, the hotel uh, in uh, Denver. Uh, so uh, as you can see, this is, a, again, fluid information uh, flowing. I've not seen George, the firefighter, yet. Uh, love to talk to him. And if I do find him, uh, guys, uh, I certainly will uh, try to you know see what his uh, feelings are and or statements. Um, so let's... Uh, you know, uh, if you're new, if you're new to our channel, we're, we're grateful. Uh, keep it classy. Uh, we've got the best mods uh, out there. They're they're fantastic. Uh, but we also want to be respectful uh, to one another. Uh, you know, again, you know, we don't know all the all the um, you know the ins and outs or the details, particularly of this uh, arrest at this point. Uh, we do not want to compromise and or uh, you know give him a fair trial. Uh, you know, it is now over in Linda Stanley's court as a district attorney. Uh, oh, that was one other thing, as you, you heard. They provided a, a thumb drive of uh, evidence to the, pro to the defense. Uh, and so that defense attorney right now has handed that to his staff, I guarantee you, and said, tell us everything we can um, uh, about uh, this situation. And at that point, they'll start studying uh, and so that's why the, the second hearing was probably pushed out uh, to May 27th. Um, so, you know, being a former homicide investigator, I've sat in that court, you know, hundreds of times uh, at that uh, prosecutor's table. 
uh, and know that it is a situation of respect uh, from both sides, uh, from both attorneys. Uh, one thing to always remember, you know, our system is set up as adversarial, but at the same time, these guys and gals uh, on the other side, you know, we may not like it, okay, but they are good people. Uh, and they have a responsibility to defend, uh, you know, bad people sometimes. It doesn't make them bad people. Uh, so keep that in mind as this uh, trial starts to unfold, uh, as we go downstream here, uh, because a lot of times the DA and the defense, uh, and it sounds like uh, this attorney that's been appointed is from the public defender's office. I guarantee you when they don't have an adversarial case in the courtroom, they're out having pizza together and hanging out. OK, so each of these guys has a role to play. One represents the state and Suzanne and the other one represents Barry and the Constitution. And so we have to be mindful of that. Uh, and that means for us, let's be respectful of that uh, in our chat uh, as we go forward as well. Um, and so that's just our system in America. And thank goodness it is. Um, so. Uh, Andy is still in uh, Indiana. I see a question coming up. Uh, as you can imagine, they're inundated. Uh, and But I want you to know that they send their love. Uh, and by the way, there's also a lot of other people uh, involved in this, friends that uh, he grew up with, uh, you know, that he's very close to uh, from kindergarten. Uh, remember, I went to his school. Now, this would be an interesting time if you've not had a chance to go unpack that uh, video we did in Indiana about how what we found out about Barry and his relationships, not only with his dad, uh, but in the community as a whole. Uh, and that will help you understand him a little bit more. Uh, as you can tell, he was sitting there today uh, pretty passive. Uh, and you can tell that uh, deep down inside, he's realized, uh, you know, this is reality. Uh, and he's sitting in that courtroom right now facing three very significant charges. Um, and so uh, if there, it, it appears he still has no bond, Christy. I see, the, see it coming in. Um, and um, so the court, what, what we learned here today, if you're just joining with us, uh, uh, three, thing, three major takeaways. Uh, number one is uh, they are extremely concerned that Barry is a flight risk. Uh, and there was a motion to um, um, let's see here. There was a there was a motion uh, to seal the arrest warrant. So they don't want the affidavit of probable cause out into the environment yet, into the public yet, because this is still a fluid investigation. And I can I can confirm that, guys. Uh, being here, uh, I saw a lot of activity last night. Uh, I've been tracking it, you know, on the ground here. And I can guarantee you this thing is still moving. Uh, I think the biggest piece of this puzzle uh, is there may be other uh, players involved here uh, and that they're trying to tie up some, uh, some of those uh, points. But he sold all of his assets here. Uh, he's limited all of his working uh, work um, efforts here in the Salida, Colorado area. Uh, and then he recently purchased a few new vehicles and they were uh, also point out that he recently moved his Bobcat uh, to Indiana. Now, while I was in Indiana, I, as I mentioned, I, I had information that he was up there. Uh, and I think this was one of those situations where they thought he could become a flight risk. But what was really interested in the affidavit uh, or the motion to seal the affidavit, they said there was a lot of noise, quote unquote, noise about leaving for Arizona. Okay. So what that means, I don't know. I mean, was he thinking about going to Arizona and then cutting across the U.S. border? Um, at, at some point, it caused enough concern uh, for the investigators uh, to raise a red flag in this motion that they do not want this affidavit released into the public uh, for concerns that there's additional information in there that could reveal uh, potentially some sources uh, while this investigation is still fluid. But I, I found that fascinating that uh, they are worried that he would be uh, an international potential flight risk. The second piece, uh, he was appointed a public defender today. Now, what does that mean? It means at this point, they are going to evaluate his, his capacity
to hire his own attorney. Until that time, uh, somebody from the public defender's office here in uh, the Chaffee County was appointed to represent him through this hearing. Uh, they did not have a discussion about uh, bond and or him getting out. So that means the no bail bond is still holding uh, and he will remain in custody at this point. Now that can change uh, as potentially he gets a new attorney and that attorney then can ask for uh, a bond hearing and then they can argue uh, those points uh, of the law as to whether or not uh, he could uh, be eligible to get out. But the most or the most interesting piece of what we heard today in this particular hearing was that a protection order was put on the girls, Mallory and Macy, uh, that Barry was allowed privileges while in custody to have visitation with the girls under three conditions. Number one, uh, that the contact not be threatening, harassing, or annoying. Now that's very that's very specific by the court, threatening, harassing, or annoying, and that he was allowed civil contact with the girls under those three pretense. If he violates them at that point, then he would be uh, in violation of not only the court order and the protection order, but then he would be also charged with an additional charge. He answered that he understood that in the affirmative. Uh, very, very subtle, uh, you know, very, you know, soft voice. Uh, you can tell that he spent his first night in jail uh, processing the fact that he's been charged uh, with the murder of his wife. Uh, and so at this point uh, for him, uh, he's, he's processing. My, my experience tells me, you know, they're going to they're gonna keep a 24-7 watch on him. Uh, probably for the next, you know, 72 hours, just to make sure, uh, you know, he's going to have uh, jail medical visits uh, where the, where they're going to really pay attention to his mental condition and his mental state. Um, and, you know, one of the other things I, I will share with you that I, I have knowledge, you know, Barry's father died young. Uh, and by the way, he died May 3rd in 20, uh, 2006, Roger. Um and Barry's had this thought process, uh, according to, you know, sources that grew up with him, that he also potentially uh, could uh, pass away. And he actually thought uh, his demise would be when he was 58 years old. Uh, now, how he's come to that conclusion, uh, uh, I do not know. Uh, but I can tell you that one of his, uh, you know, friends that he grew up with in kindergarten, uh, since kindergarten has uh, been aware of this and that Barry uh, even recently shared it with him uh, or her and that uh, that information uh, was very concerning. Uh, and so I've, you know, that information has been shared. Uh, hopefully they will keep him under watch uh, because I obviously I think he's still uh, pretty unstable uh, right now with the, with those types of uh, delusions uh, in his mind. Um, so that's, that said, uh, the girls, uh, we're not going to talk about them. They are safe. Uh, they are, uh, in, uh, a situation, uh, away from everybody. Uh, I know where they are, but I choose not to communicate, uh, with or talk about them, uh, other than to let you know that they too are, uh, uh, part of, you know, this whole process of now losing their father, uh, and their mother, uh, and we do not know what the totality of uh, where, you know, um, what they may be thinking or what they may be doing uh, and or if, in fact, you know, this was a, a situation where, you know, their father was uh, keeping them, uh, you know, isolated. Uh, and we don't know. So we're not going to speculate. But I do believe all of us in our in on our channel, uh, as we continue to be respectful and that information comes out. Uh, I think we're going to be able to say that we took the high ground and uh, let everybody, uh, you know, give them, give those girls some room. Uh, I knew the media was trying to find them yesterday because uh, I was asked uh, and uh, I, I refused to divulge where they are. So uh, that said, uh, you know, um, just always remember Andy's family is suffering. Uh, 
Um, his sister gave a beautiful um, comment. Uh, you know, she was a rose among thorns. Uh, and, you know, that family now needs to start processing what's going to take place. Um, and I'm sh I can tell you, I can assure you they're regrouping uh, as a family and that uh, Barry's family is also regrouping. Uh, and remember, I said this a long time ago, there are going to be a lot more uh, uh, victims in this case, not, not physical, but mental and emotional and spiritual. Uh, and now you have two families who will be faced off in a court of, tra in a court of law uh, at, the, at the death of another family member by the hands of another family member. Uh, it's, this is a tragedy all around, tragedy all around. So this is about Suzanne uh, and keeping her first and foremost uh, in the focus. And now that job shifts to the district attorney, uh, Linda Stanley. Uh, I, I'm just going to just describe her in one word, bulldog. Okay. Uh, I love DAs like that. I've worked with many of them. Uh, I can tell you uh, one of the greatest DAs I've ever worked with is a guy named Mark Patin uh, in San Diego. Absolute bulldog. Uh, just fantastic individual. Uh, as also, you know, many others that I can name. Dave Rubin, uh, who uh, prosecuted Brandon Wilson uh, in San Diego, that he was my case where he killed Matthew Checky in a bathroom, uh, which started the family bathroom movement in the United States. Uh, that was a long time ago. And we'll get into that case on another time. Uh, that said, these district attorneys, these defense attorneys, uh, their friends uh, off site. So we need to be respect them, respectful of them uh, here, please, in, in our chat. And I love our mods. I love our family here. You guys are just, you know, top shelf. And uh, if we start seeing, you know, craziness, uh, you guys know what to do. You know the rules. Uh, so um, maybe I can go over here for a second and see if there's any uh, questions that come up while we got you, while we've got folks here. And, and if you would be kind, kind enough to share this out and, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please hit that. Uh, did they find her body? My, uh, not yet. Uh, great question, Maj. Uh, Maya, I, I, I think it's Maya ninety nine. Uh, forgive me for uh, if I've mispronounced your name. I'm sorry. Uh, they have not found her uh, body yet, but they uh, are diligently working. Uh, Romeo's heart. Chris, how do you think he killed her? Do you have a good idea how he did it? Um. I think I have an idea, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to put that out right now. Okay, if you if you can understand, um, so next. But thank you for that question, and I will answer the question uh, as we go forward. Okay, uh, uh, Yakamoto uh, three times three. Has anything been mentioned of Barry uh, filing to get guardianship over Sudan, Madison County, Indiana last June? Uh, I know there's been uh, you know a lot of research on that. And yeah, so when we were just up there, uh, we discovered that um, he not only uh, was, you know, liquidating uh, additional uh, things up there, he was selling property. Uh, I, I shared with you about uh, the house uh, that he came into uh, control over. Uh, and then also some of the other business uh, transactions that he was involved in. Uh, so yeah, he was... And, and that was one of the things the night before last when I drove by his house. He had a big trailer out in front of his house. And, and my gut told me, oh, he's, he's going to make a move here. Uh, and so uh, the next morning, sure enough, 0915, they got him going on the road, uh, going into Salida. And I think they had the same uh, gut feeling. So uh, was he going to run? Yes, Jackie. Uh, my personal f opinion was, uh, and by the way, when I saw it, when I drove by the house, all the windows were open. Uh, and so you could clearly see in the house. I took no pictures, of course not, but I did drive by his house and I you know, could see him in there. And he was almost at a counter surveillance as if he was watching, you know, the bee watcher watching. Right. Remember the guy on the bicycle uh, back in the day uh, when all the searchers were there and uh, the guy with the, the mask and stuff. And I put that photo out on Twitter. OK, that's the bee watchers watching. Okay? Uh, I don't know who that is, but uh, I definitely know he's connected to, to Barry. Terry Howie, how, Chris, do you expect other arrests in this? Um, do it, You know, I think there's a possibility. Uh, I think, you know, based on, uh, you know, the, the course of this investigation, there could be. Uh, who those people are, I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, I think there could be. 
there's, there are some indications uh, there possibly could be. Uh, why not divorce? Why killer? You know, that, that's a great, great question. Uh, you know, narcissistic personality. Uh, I don't know what the motive's going to be at this point, uh, but I'm sure we're going to certainly find out soon enough. Janet Wells, did his girlfriend switch sides and reveal information to the police? Uh, great question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I can tell you who she is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to dime her off here. Uh, but I can also tell you she's MIA. Uh, she's not been around for the last uh, two or three days. Uh, so we don't know. That's a great, great point. The Blue Velvet River, what type of stuff would be uh, in the documents that would make it necessary to seal them? Uh, is it to protect others? Uh, yes and no uh, to both of those questions. Yes, it could protect sources. It could also protect uh, some evidentiary information that they have uh, that would uh, potentially point to some uh, additional evidence that they do not want in the public arena right now and or information that would uh, reveal uh, sources on flight uh, risk for Barry. So they want to keep that close to the chest. Great question. Uh, Mary Reyna, what happens now to the property he sold? Uh, that is a great question. Uh, the girls are going to have to, you know, make some quick moves. Mallory is a teen, is an adult, so she can uh, get an attorney, petition the court for guardianship of Macy. Uh, and at that point, they then uh, could get uh, an attorney, uh, a tax estate attorney, who could work with them uh, about those assets. Uh, if they don't do that, you can bet. Uh, if there are any assets available, they will be, uh, they will be evaporated by the uh, court system, i.e. Defend, defending him. Uh, other people coming in, potentially uh, big guns, attorneys, uh, you can bet that money is going to uh, go quickly. A life beyond horizons, did Barry do something that triggered the protection order or is that a normal part of process? I think it's a normal part of process life. Uh, and the reason for that is the DA uh, did not oppose it. Uh, they were not against it. So they're, they're extending an olive branch to allow the girls to visit with him uh, in the, the jail. Uh, and that may also lead towards uh, the, you know, their feeling that uh, those assets, uh, if there are any, because according to the, uh, the motion, uh, he liquidated everything. Uh, now, what that means and where he's put that money, uh, I don't know at this point, uh, but I'm sure we're going to find out. Uh, Michelle Modest, could it have been an accident? Uh, anything's possible. Anything's possible. Southern Sass, Chris, in your experience, you think Barry actually believed he was going to get away with this? Uh, yes, I do. I do think he believed that uh, he had committed the perfect crime. Uh, and again, remember, he's innocent till proven guilty. Uh, that burden of proof now lies on the district attorney's office. Uh, for, uh, you know, proving beyond a reasonable doubt. Remember, as investigators, our job is to establish probable cause and the facts of the case and then present them to the district attorney who makes the ultimate decision to take it to trial. So our, our responsibility as an officer of the court, and that's what we were called uh, as, you know, law enforcement, is to take that individual into custody and to bring them before the court with the charges, uh, you know, that were the elements of the charges that fit in the probable cause uh, affidavit, and then the court system would take over, and that's where we're at today. Uh, what public defender is he broke? A great question. Uh, the court asked him if he would uh, like to have a public defender represent him. He said yes in the affirmative, uh, very sheepishly too, by the way. I don't know if you guys, you know, caught that when you uh, when you first see the, 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 the live here early on, if you're just getting with us, uh, there's a couple of things I want to tell you up front. You know, that, that was a WebEx meeting, and I think the court got inundated uh, by people coming in because there's a lot of beeping that WebEx does, and you can't control that. I, we had no control over that. Uh, so uh, long story short, this was the first step. Uh, from this point forward, uh, they can establish uh, through, uh, you know, some discussions behind the scene whether or not he has the funds uh, to hire his own private attorney. Uh, and if the girls don't get control of that money uh, quickly, then uh, it, he's going to, he's going to go through it. Like, you know, just, it'll be gone like butter. Uh, is he on suicide watch? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, salsa shakers. Thank you so much. Yeah. I know he is. So they, they've got him on a 24 seven 
uh, and they're checking on him every 15, every 15 minutes. Yep. And that's probably one of the reasons why the DA uh, was loose with allowing visitations from the daughter under the protective order. Uh, so he can have a sense of, uh, you know, peace on, the, on that piece of the pie, you know, up here. Uh, is your assessment, how likely is due guilty? Say 98%. Uh, uh, greetings from Portugal. Uh, Henry, uh, I'm not going to go there. I would tell you this. Uh, I would have put a, a set of bracelets on him, uh, and I would, I would uh, have put him exactly where he is today. So my feeling was that the evidence uh, pointed in the right direction uh, and that, uh, you know, uh, they got the right guy. Uh, do you think they will grant, uh, do you think they will grandfather and death penalty? Uh, Leah, Alexander, I don't know. Uh, I certainly don't know. This is, uh, you know, it's a great state. And I got to tell you, being here in Salida and meeting the people here, th these folks are awesome. They're, they're so, they're so generous. They're so kind. Uh, and, and, you know, this was a lot of pressure on them too. They wanted this result. Uh, they, because, you know, every day he was walking around and going to the gym and, you know, just doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, he was hitting on other women. He was dating other women, you know, while his wife is missing. And they were watching him sell his house going, what the heck's going on here? But all along, you know, the, the sheriff's department, CBI, FBI were working this thing behind the scenes and they kept the cards close to their chest. So, you know, uh, there you go. Chris, do you hear about the PI that moved into two, uh, the same two condos as Barry to watch in last year? What if for one, the evidence are Barry? Well, I know it wasn't a PI. Let me tell you that <laughs> it wasn't a private investigator. Uh, it was LE. Uh, they were watching him. They were on him. Uh, in fact, when I was, when I drove by the night before they took him down, uh, I saw some assets there uh, that, you know, through my experience, I knew, uh, you know, this thing's going to go quickly. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, JRJRS, uh, Hola, they lived in Salina, uh, Salida. Uh, let's see here. I, uh, I, I, well, their house is in Poncha Springs, uh, the actual residence where they live. And uh, because uh, the courthouse is in Chafee County here, I think Salida just kind of got stuck in the middle of this. Uh, but it was Maysville, uh, Poncha Springs, where most of this went down. Uh, and so... Um, you know, Salida is just, I think, a point of reference as a city uh, here. But all three of these cities, uh, you know, are just great people. Uh, they're, they're just really super people. Uh, I went to Amica's Pizza last night uh, here in, uh, I'll tell you, if you haven't been to Amica's, uh, it, it was fantastic. Um, so uh, at the court hearing already happened, yes, uh, you can take a look at it uh, in the beginning. Uh, of this life here. So uh, with that, uh, it looks like, um, you know, if, if you're just kind of uh, getting here for a second. Oh, we bought the house in 2018. Okay. Oh, so just to let you know when he, the, the question was, when did he buy the house? Uh, I had uh, my dear friend here say uh, the house was purchased at 2018 in 2018. So uh, there you go. And, and, and I, I do have to say another thing about, you know, that just thinking through that. So if you take a look at how the terrain in Indiana and how, what Suzanne loved and what she felt about, uh, you know, you're going to see a, a real contrast uh, to personality uh, here. You know, Suzanne, you know, when we were at her house and I called that her home. I called it Barry's house, but her home. And, and I did that for a reason, uh, because that really was her home. That's where, you know, she was grounded. Okay? Uh, she was raised there. You know, the golf course, uh, as you could see. And I, I, I thought it was fascinating that he revealed those letters uh, that she had written to him during their courtship, where she talked about the green, you know, the first kiss, and all of that um, that she put down in writing and that he revealed that, but those, and he revealed that as if they were a most recent, uh, you know, letter that was presented, right? Well, those letters were years ago. Okay? And when we went there and stood at that golf course 
on at that green. I, I just sensed her. And, and it was really fascinating to take that environment and then plug it into Colorado and then try to think through, okay, well, what was she, you know, what was she feeling when she left, uh, you know, the home that she, you know, had Christmas with, at with her girls as young, as young babies, uh, when, you know, she would be, you know, having Thanksgiving dinners all and all of the holidays celebrating it, uh, in that place. And, and that across the street were, you know, were are a tremendous amount of woods, okay, where Barry, you know, in, in my opinion, you know, hunters, you know, there's two types of hunters, right? There's the narcissistic like him that is, it's almost this desire and need to kill, okay? Uh, yet, you know, a normal hunter, they hunt, you know, for food uh, as well as, you know, you know, to fill up a freezer, right? But not Barry. Barry is hunting for the thrill of the kill. Uh, that's a different type of hunter. And you'll notice in his booking photo, he's in camo. Okay? He lives this idea, this personality, this persona, okay, is so specific, okay, to him, his makeup. So if you haven't had a chance to get over and see you know, that video that, that we did on, you know, what we learned about him, uh, take a moment if you would to go see it because it's going to give you such a greater understanding of what his, uh, what he's going through right now, sitting in jail because he feels trapped. Uh, you know, again, he's used to tracking and, 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 you know, kind of guiding a conversation and managing, uh, you know, the conversation. Well, He's lost now. He he's lost. I mean, he, they just walked him out into a courtroom with a set of handcuffs on, you know, an orange jumpsuit and a face mask, and and you know you hear yes sir, no sir, right? Um, and so you know he's really uh, trying to figure out you know how he's going to manipulate the system. Now that's will be the next phase for Barry's behavior here. He's, he's going to try to figure out how in the world, um, you know, what in the world is going to go uh, towards for him. He's going to try to manipulate the system in his benefit. Uh, he's not done. Okay? He's just starting. Uh, now this is phase two. Now, if he feels, though, that he's trapped, okay, then, yeah, that, that process uh, in his mind uh, could go up that he could be a threat to himself okay, and or others. And that's why the court under the protective order gave him the admonition to be civil. And, and the court said three things. Remember, you can't threaten, you can't harass, and you cannot annoy. Okay? And he specifically said Macy and Mallory. Okay? Now, that's an interesting protective order. Okay? Because attached to that is also the other side that if he does that, they're going to charge him with another charge. Okay. Well, so we're going to see, you know, how this unfolds, right? We're going to see uh, if he abides by that. My gut tells me he's going to, uh, but he's going to use the girls as messengers of manipulation. What? Remember what we talk about triangulation? Okay. He's going to try to utilize the girls as uh, messages uh, of uh, community, okay? as a soft point, as a message point. Okay? So let's let's see how this unfolds uh, over the next uh, you know couple weeks here. Uh, I think the first week uh, in jail, uh, we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit more uh, about him starting to break down. Uh, right now, I think he's in shock. Uh, he believes that, you know, he he'd gotten uh, away with it for a little bit. Uh, I don't know uh, if, uh, you know, what his process is up here. I can guarantee you they've got him in isolation uh, and that they're going to keep him away from the general population at this point. Uh, because as everybody knows, you know, that, that, that system's designed for control. Okay? And Barry's 
his whole life has been about control. Okay? And that control is no longer with him. Okay? So as a result of that, and, and you really see that in the video, uh, that, that, you know, again, uh, you know, go back and see it, you know, and then, and, and, you know, put your, um, in the description below, go read, go read what, uh, you know, the video is about and then go watch it. And you're, and that was just produced, you know, uh, two days before, you know, we hooked him up. Uh, and so I, you know, I had a feeling that it was time to get into his psyche. Uh, and hopefully I was living in his head. Uh, for a couple of days, because I know he's been following me on, uh, on uh, you know, YouTube. Uh, and that was purposeful that I did that. Uh, and so now it looks like, uh, you know, he's processing all of that. But for us uh, in our community, take a look at it. And, uh, uh, you know, I think you're going to be surprised. But one of the most interesting things there, again, to go back uh, to Suzanne and, you know, some of her environment there, her environment was, you know, it was just so free for her. Uh, and, you know, this is where she beat cancer. Uh, this is where she had all of her friends, her closest friends. Okay? Uh, this is where, you know, they would, you know, commu- you know, go to yoga together, you know, hang out together. J- just like my, my sweet wife. I mean, she really felt that this was her home. And that's, this is where the grandchildren would come. This is where all of those dreams uh, that have been lost now and taken from her uh, by her husband. In, in around there, okay, he had burned so many bridges uh, in, in not only business deals, uh, but um, other things, right? He was very forceful. And because, you know, he came back from baseball, uh, you know, where he failed in baseball. He, and, and that's why I wanted to point out that understand, in order to understand him, you had to go first to that very first baseball field as a kid. Uh, and then you have to understand his dad. His dad, Roger, was uh, a very forceful uh, guy. Everybody I talked to and everybody we talked to said his dad was just no nonsense and just you know crazy at times, yelling at him, uh, forcing him to do things, not asking him to go practice, forcing him to go practice. Okay. There, there's a difference there. Okay. His dad built this uh, batting cage in the back of his house over there and, you know, made him, made him practice every day, even when he didn't feel like it. Now I'm not talking about driving, you know, a child to succeed. I mean, our oldest son is, is a, is a professor of economics. Okay. My oldest son's a professor of economics. Okay. And, I drove him to succeed on his terms. Okay? And that's the difference. Okay? Barry didn't have his own terms. And so the baseball field became a, um, a refuge for him. And that the hunting uh, became, I think, a vent for that anger. Uh, and that's, you know, I'm by no means a doctor, uh, but, you know, uh, I've done enough of this. Uh, and, you know, my training has told me that, uh, wow, this guy was looking for all kinds of different things. And, and when he came back from, um, you know, uh, after the baseball fail and, and, and after Purdue, okay, the first company that he went to work for, uh, you know, I don't know if you know this, but uh, uh, he took all of the clients with him uh, from, the, from his first employer. Okay. And, you know, that, that in of itself started him on a path of taking, taking, taking. Okay? And so he was very, you know, very direct. Uh, he would get into, you know, get into you pretty quickly. And all of this, by the way, is up in Indiana. Right? And so all of this was building up, uh, we discovered, while we were up there. Okay? In Indiana, it was all building. And so he forced Suzanne, basically, uh, to, you know, pile up and we're leaving. And she didn't want to go. Okay? In fact, I've seen pictures okay, of how they left Indiana. Okay? And I, I got to be honest with you. Uh, it looked like the Beverly Hillbillies uh, and the Clampets. Okay? He literally threw everything up on a trailer 
Okay? Piled it as high as he could get it. It was an it was an open bed trailer. He had his truck, his open bed trailer uh, with an ATV uh, also uh, on it. Right, his hunting ATV. Okay? And ninety percent of it was about hunting. Ten okay? percent was about Suzanne. Okay? Uh, and all of this stuff he piles up into this um, you know trailer, and they're off to Colorado. Uh, and I can only imagine internally, you know, what she was going through and what she was processing. Uh, I heard from her girlfriends and her friends that she was embarrassed uh, to leave that way uh, because everybody was like, you know, wow, Barry, you know, this is kind of out of character for you. But I really think he was, you know, starting to spin out uh, at that time in 2018 and that it just started to you know, get worse and worse. And he became more controlling. Uh, he started isolating her, uh, just like he did quite frankly, I think towards, uh, the, just before they left, if you'll notice in the video, I mentioned that their alarm system is, uh, disconnected. Uh, he had, somebody had pulled all the wires out of, uh, the, the alarm system, the gate systems and stuff. So, uh, and I know that, uh, uh, you know, that, um, you know, he was, um, you know, just kind of going down that lane. Now, I don't know, and there's no evidence that he was, you know, that way towards the girls. So let's not go there. Okay. Uh, we don't know that. Okay. But uh, you, there has, there's what they call transfer. Okay. As Suzanne is out of the picture, remember, Barry is, is not going to change his personality. You know, it, that's set in stone. And so if Susan's not there, or Suzanne's not there. Well, you know, let's not speculate, but there's a possibility, you know, that transfer can go in any direction. Uh, it could even have gone towards his new girlfriend uh, who may have experienced some of it or at least saw some of it. And then hopefully came to the realization that, holy cow, this guy, you know, uh, there's all kinds of problem here. If you want to know about these guys, obviously go over to Dr. You know, Judy Ho uh, and uh, others uh, to, who, you know, do a whole assessment on narcissistic personality types. And Barry, Barry's the guy. Uh, he is that guy. Uh, and many of you here in our group uh, have been survivors of these guys. And God bless you. And, and quite frankly, I'm grateful that you're, you know, part of our family here on the interview room because, uh, you know, this is about empowering you and empowering women, empowering people to help you recognize uh, those signs uh, of these, you know, problematic uh, personality types. Uh, but I, I just found it fascinating that they took him down and he was in a camo shirt. Okay. Guys, doesn't that speak volumes? You know, everything that he does, it revolves around hunting and money, everything. Uh, that's what my uh, assessment has been with him and that we've discovered here. A, uh, not only here, but over there. So um, let's see if there's any more uh, questions that uh, you guys may have. If you've just joined us, uh, Barry was appointed a public defender. He was given a protective order to stay away from the girls under three conditions. Uh, civil contact that cannot be threatening, harassing, or annoying. So that means Macy and Mallory can go visit him uh, in the jail. Uh, and then there's another hearing set for May 27th. Uh, the search warrant's been sealed. Um, and uh, if uh, you are first uh, time here on our channel, please, uh, I would ask you if you would consider subs uh, subscribing. Uh, and uh, we, we're grateful that you're here. Uh, and then if you could share this video out, uh, I would greatly appreciate that as well. Um, so let's see if uh, we can get uh, some more questions up here. Let me take a look. Uh, did Barry go to yeah, in the winter of this last year? Yes. And he went with the girls and one of his uh, daughter's girlfriends. Uh, and that was that photograph, um, you know, that was uh, put out uh, where the girls were down there. Is it possible the girlfriend was undercover? Morris at 17? Yes, that is possible. At this point, I don't know that. Uh, but I definitely know she's MIA. Uh, and so there's a high probability that could also be part of the play here. Yeah, great question. Um, let's see what's got here. Uh, 
let's see here. Uh, does Barry have a second home for vacations? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I know he's got friends uh, that are down in Mexico, uh, that he goes down to a ranch down there, uh, and he hunts down there extensively. And, and the interesting thing is he also brings friends from Indiana, uh, which which are, you know, which is also problematic here because you had people next to him uh, that, you know, through this whole course uh, where he was taking them into the house and, you know, he was offering certain things. Uh, and, uh, you know, that that's just crazy. Uh, and they, you know, they were, they were, you know, the people that came out to defend him during the search. Uh, now I understand that as a friend, uh, but at this point, you know, a good friend would have said, you know, Barry, you got to jump in there with Andy, uh, and you got to get out there, uh, and you know, you got to you got to engage with with Andy and help find Suzanne. But the fact that they defended him and enabled him, uh, you know, wow, that's crazy. Uh, um, do we think he'll hurt anybody else? Uh, um, not now. Uh, he's in custody, so uh, we'll see where that's going to go. And um, um, so that's him. Okay, um, let's see what we got here. Let me read here. Sorry, thanks. Uh, uh, not a fan of berries. Uh, okay, no problem. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a great statement. Uh, Helen, it'd be great if the Mormon family could buy the Puma Path property. Yeah, well, I, I heard that property was actually uh, purchased by some investors uh, out of Las Vegas. Isn't that interesting? So maybe there's another money trail here. We're not sure yet. Um, let's see here. Uh, a huge thank you to uh, all of our mods. Uh, you guys are the greatest uh, to all of our family. Uh, thank you for becoming members. Uh, if you're just joining with us, um, our, our intent here uh, is hopefully to bring, uh, you know, real content that is uh, solid, evidence-based, not speculation, not going down a lot of rabbit holes. Uh, and so um, that said, there is one character uh, in Indiana that uh, I found pretty interesting that's not come out of the woodwork yet. Uh, and his name is Sal. Okay. Um, so we're, let's see how this unfolds uh, with that guy. Uh, and so I think at some point we'll hear more about him. Uh, and also, uh, if any of you know George, uh, the, uh, the Iraqi uh, 400 tour uh, guy, uh, let's see if we can uh, connect with him. Uh, and see, you know, how that's going. And, and is it Saul or Sal? I, uh, it's, uh, you know, I, I think they call him Sal, okay? which could be Saul. Uh, so um, there you go. Uh, that said, uh, I've got, uh, I'm, I'm on uh, Boob Pear for Pizza. You're so kind. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Thank you so much for uh, the, uh, let's see here. Whoops. Dylan, can you put these up, please? Uh, Czar. Okay, so didn't understand the protective lawsuit with gross. Okay, so uh, MHR, so let me explain that for you. Great, great question, and thank you so much for, for that. You're very kind. Okay, so the protective order is this. Okay? Uh, the court asked the district attorney if, in fact, right, uh, they were going to uh, oppose a protective order uh, against uh, Mr. Morphew, i.e. they wanted it in place. Okay, And when the court asked the DA, the DA says, Your Honor, we're not opposed to it. So yeah, let it happen. Okay. Okay. So what that means now is Barry is allowed a privilege to visit Macy and Mallory while in custody in the jail. Okay. So when they come to the to the uh, visitor center, i.e. in the front lobby of the jail, they have to check in. They have to hand their IDs, right? They'll, ver they'll verify who they are. And then they'll take them to 
uh, you know, a place where family and or attorneys can visit with the inmate. It may be uh, with a piece of plexiglass between them. And typically it's a phone situation where they talk through a speaker. Okay? And in this protective order, though, the judge said in order for that to happen, Mr. Morphew, okay, there are three conditions. The first is this is a civil uh, protective order under contact, for contact with no threats. You can't threaten them. You cannot harass them and you cannot annoy them. Okay? So if he can abide by those three conditions during the visitation, then the judge would grant the protective order. So the judge asked him at that point, Mr. Morphy, do you, can you abide by those conditions? And he, he answered in the affirmative, very sheepishly, by the way. He was very quiet. He says, yes, I can do that. So the judge says, okay, and he turned back to the DA. Do you have any, do you oppose? He said, no, your honor. So then the judge says, okay, uh, I grant the protection order. And if you violate it, you will be charged with another uh, um, crime. Okay, you'll be charged with another crime. So that said, uh, that is essentially what the protective order does. Uh, it allows visitation for the girls to see Barry uh, while he's in custody in jail. Okay. Um, if you're just joining us, this was about the hearing. Uh, he was denied, uh, well, there's actually no bond discussion. So that means the no bond still stands. Uh, and what we learned uh, were a few things. There was a motion to keep the um, uh, arrest warrant sealed. Uh, and that um, that was based on a couple of conditions, and I'm going to uh, share with everybody what those conditions were. Uh, so the motion to seal the arrest warrant were, were for a couple of reasons. One, uh, he, they are extremely concerned that Barry is at a flight risk from the state and possibly the United States. So basically what that uh, comes down to is he, he's a potential international flight risk if he gets out. The second piece of that, the probable cause statement was he sold his Puma Path home and all of his assets he has liquidated uh, and he has limited business dealings here in the Colorado area. So that was another worry, uh, uh, a problem for them. Uh, the third, and this is from the district attorney's office, he recently purchased new vehicles. And that the fourth, he took his Bobcat to Indiana. Okay. Now, we knew about that, and I, and I said that recently, that he was working on an amphitheater up there. Okay. And that he, the, he has been, quote, making noises about leaving for Arizona. Okay. So that said, okay, the court was asked to consider uh, sealing uh, the uh, 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 search or search warrant and the arrest warrant uh, affidavit. So we'll, we're going to hear more about that, I'm sure, uh, as it goes along here. Uh, so, Bill, Dill, what else we got? I see Mandy or Julie. Let's let's put Julie in here. Uh, will people be more willing to uh, talk now? Thank you, Julie. Great question, and thank you. Uh, let's hope so. Right, I think. If they feel confident that he is in custody and that he cannot uh, get out, uh, a lot of times, uh, in my experience, we would see witnesses start to come forward. And then, you know, of course, they would tell us, you know, hey, you know, you, you don't understand. And, and, they're, and we're, they're right. We didn't understand. Uh, and they had their own reasons. So thank you. That's a great question. So, uh, whoops. Uh, Mandy, do you think the girls want to see Barry because uh, he's their dad or because they know something? Love your channel. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Uh, I think that's both. Um, you know, how do you not uh, love your dad, number one? Uh, and number two, uh, you know, how do you not know being around him uh, some clues? Um, I know for a fact, you know, just on my, my uh, working into this uh, situation, he, he was giving away everything that belonged to Suzanne. I mean, let's just think about the statue that's over where the bicycle was found. Okay? 
I mean, let's think of the behavior in that. That was a statue given to Suzanne uh, at the time her mother passed away. Okay. Now, that statue then is now placed in the area where um, the um, initial reports were that she, um, you know, became up missing. Now, that is basically taking Suzanne's prized possession, by the way, right? That was described as, you know, in, in memory of her mom. Okay. And then it was pushed, okay, into the tree or next to the tree. It was put out by the tree. Okay. So basically what that indicates possibly is that, you know, you know, washing our hands, you know, it, it, it's out. Okay. And now at the same time, you have her husband, uh, you know, as, as that's a gesture some, of somehow, okay, that, you know, they're going to use that as a gesture somehow. Uh, yet really what it is, is if he's in fact thinking about packing up and taking off, okay, uh, he was going to leave her best, her greatest, uh, you know, possession by the tree. Uh, from a behavioral analysis aspect, from in criminal behavior, that right there, guys, is really a slap in the face to Suzanne. It's not a gesture of memory. Okay? The gesture of memory was from uh, about her mom, Suzanne's mom. Okay, uh, you can't cross that into into a, another circumstance. Okay, so you know. Uh, I think that was a fascinating piece uh, of this puzzle most recently where he showed his cards. Okay? Uh, because, again, that was one of the reasons I went by his house uh, the night before they took him down. And lo and behold, there was that trailer sitting right out front. And I'm thinking, oh, he's going to he's going to go. He's going to skedaddle. OK. Uh, and so I was grateful that they took him down the next morning. Uh, uh, that was really great. So, um would the police be looking for the girlfriend? Yeah, I think guaranteed, Barb. Yeah, uh, they're out there uh, if they haven't already communicated with her. Uh, we don't know the totality or the circumstances around it, but um, I, I, one of the things I heard was that she looked stunningly like Suzanne, that Barry had made that comment to her. Uh, and I got that firsthand uh, from a friend of hers. So there you go. Is the... Uh, is there a GIF or is, or is this rumor, please? What, what does that mean? Uh, elaborate, Deborah. Girlfriend. Oh, is there a girlfriend? No, that's, 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 that's guaranteed. I'll guarantee you. I even know her name. I have her pictures. Okay? I've known who she was for the last five months. Uh, and if you go look at some of my old tweets, uh, I, uh, I gave you a hint, okay? but I didn't release it, and I'm not going to. Okay? But absolutely, I guarantee it. You know, uh, the joy catcher. I wonder uh, who he tried to buy off the public servant. So great question, joy catcher. So that's that charge could be a couple of things. Uh, it could be number one, uh, when he was arrested at that moment, he may have made a spontaneous statement to, you know, somebody right that, you know, hey, if you know, let me go, dude, I'll give you a hundred dollars. OK. Uh, you know, that's a possibility. So therefore, it says public servant. Okay, that's 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 uh, where that came from. The other is, you know, he could have been trying to squeeze some money uh, to somebody uh, on the other end. And, and that's another reason why uh, the affidavit is probably going to remain sealed, uh, because there's probably probable cause and information that will lead us to that answer. So um, that that could be one of the two takeaways uh, I don't necessarily think it's a bribe. Uh, I think it's going to be something along the, the lines of, um, you know, hey, uh, help me out over here. Uh, and uh, if you do that, I'll, you know, give you this or that. And it sounds like they didn't take it. So, Miss Harrio, was Barry aware of what happened to Chris Watts? How stupid can he be thinking he would get away? Well, here's another part of uh, Barry's personality. Uh, when he would go hunting, all of his friends reported, and you're going to find this uh, fascinating, 
uh, are here in this uh, uh, true crime community. Okay? Guess what he would listen to? And I'm not talking for a couple hours. Okay, I'm talking for six, seven, eight hours, ten hours at a time. Uh, I've I heard it from different friends being described as even as much as you know ten plus hours. But guess what he'd listen to? Right, true crime podcast about murder. Okay? And I, when I first heard that, I was like, "No, come on, you got to be kidding!" No. Okay? And uh, I, I sent, uh, I put a couple of those hints out uh, early on when I first heard that uh, to see if that would resonate with him. Okay? And uh, I got information back that <laughs> he was furious. Okay? So uh, there you go. But that's what he was listening to. He was following Chris Watts. He was following Peterson. He was following all of these guys. Okay. And he was listening to these podcasts uh, and in his truck. Okay. When he, by the way, well, when he was going on hunting trips, well, on the way to hunting trips. Okay. So if it was a four hour trip up, he would listen to true crime. And if it was a four hour trip back, he'd listen to true crime. Okay. Uh, I can't say that for his work uh, situation, but other than that, uh, you know, I know that's, that's factual in nature. Okay. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, and so this again goes to what his mindset was. Uh, and, you know, he did not, he always was trying to stay ahead and, and try to manipulate the conversation and, or control the conversation. You, you notice all the messaging uh, in this investigation, in this case has come from Barry Morphew. Okay. It, it came from him. Okay. Chris, do you feel, I have a gut feeling about where the Suzanne could be? Uh, JRS, you know, I, I have some uh, information that uh, un unfortunately uh, I cannot uh, lay that out. The, the, the PD knows about it uh, through their own uh, sources and investigations and, and uh, you know, things that we, um, you know, have brought to other people's attention. So the investigation is still fluid and I certainly don't want to jeopardize uh, anything. Okay, but thank you for asking. I uh, wonder if he's listened to vlogs about himself. Cha-Cha, you know, that's a great question. Wouldn't that be fascinating? Uh, I know he was following all of us here. He was following every true crime thing that he could get his hands on uh, behind the scenes. And, and what was so manipulating about him is he kept it, you know, he kept it under control. I mean, and if we think about that, remember the guy on the bicycle, we think about that uh, during the search again, okay? There's a lot of rumors who that person could be. Okay. But when I when that came out, uh, I I sent a tweet out, remember, and I said, uh, hey, does anybody know who this knucklehead is? Okay. Knowing that he was the bee watcher, watching the bees, okay, the bee watcher watcher. Okay. And so he had, remember, we talked about triangulation early on uh, a long time ago, um, um, that um, if he's going to communicate to the public, Okay, he's going to do it through a third party, uh, and he's going to send that messaging down. Okay, and that's what he's done. Yeah, uh, Lula Bell was it? Tre was it Trevor? I don't know. Could it have been? Uh, do you know anything uh, about Mr. Noel? So, Julie, great question. So, in that the the video, what we learned about Barry. If you go look at that house next to him, uh, that is his uh, sister's house. Uh, Barry's sister's house. Now, Barry had two sisters and their father doted on Barry, uh, basically ignored the girls. Uh, they were cheerleaders in high school. Uh, they were very popular, uh, but dad never supported their efforts. But Barry could walk on water. And in fact, uh, some of you know uh, friends uh, even reported that they would have the girls uh, under the direction of the father wait on Barry. Uh, while growing up. So, you know, he was kind of the, you know, the golden child. Um, and so Trevor lives next door to Barry. That's his mom's house, that white house. Uh, and so it made sense that he was, you know, the first one on the scene uh, when Suzanne uh, was reported missing. I find it interesting 
We also learned by somebody who was there okay, firsthand that Trevor orchestrated the 27, 30 seconds uh, first video that Barry put out. It was Trevor's idea to make that happen. It was Barry actually pushed back and told him, no, it's too early. Now, what that means at this point, I don't know. Okay? But the information that we had, they kind of went back and forth toe to toe. And so Barry finally agreed. And it is literally just kind of off the cuff with Trevor filming it. Okay? And that, you know, Barry just kind of shoot, shot from the hip, uh, which makes sense because, you know, if, if we all remember, you watch it, it's just so disjointed and disingenuous okay? that, you know, he's not only trying to make up a story, but he's also trying to push back on Trevor about, I think this is a stupid idea. Okay? And lo and behold, you know, that was the beginning of the end. Uh, the moment that, you know, he, he put, plugged that out there. So when, we, when will he put in a plea? I'm, uh, I'm sure to not be, can they cut the deal? No death penalty. It gives us Suzanne's location. Uh, you know, that's a great question. Um, I think there's, there's another hearing on the 27th uh, where, you know, he could enter uh, a plea. And then from that point, uh, they'll have a preliminary hearing uh, and they'll, the DA will present just enough information uh, to, bind it over to superior court. Uh, and that's when all the hearings start. And that's when all the, you know, the movement back and forth on what's going to be suppressed, what's coming in, what's not coming in, uh, that type of stuff. Uh, so, um, yeah, great question. And let's hope uh, that uh, it does result in uh, maybe taking uh, somebody else potentially and saying, hey, here's the deal. Okay, you're going to tell us. Uh, and, you know, we'll give you, uh, you know, uh, immunity, right? Uh, and or, you know, partial immunity, uh, not necessarily completely separ separating. But uh, I think uh, there could be a lot more coming, guys. Uh, at this point, we'll, we'll see where it's going to go. But uh, kudos to the DA down here. Uh, she, you know, she had some chutzpah and she took it on. This is uh, at this point. Without seeing that affidavit, you know, we have a circumstantial case. And again, I always like to use the analogy of a swimming pool. Uh, and you see all these wet footprints going from the swimming pool into the house. The question that the jury is going to have to answer based on the evidence that's presented, is it possible that a human being made those footprints? Okay? And so now the question is going to be, is it possible based on the evidence that you're seeing that Barry is responsible for taking Suzanne's life. Okay? And right now, this is where that case sits. It is a circumstantial case. Okay? Uh, and at some point, uh, uh, um, at some point, okay, those answers will come. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. Uh, we are on the ground here in Maysfield, Salida, and Poncho Springs. Uh, we're still gathering information. I'll report back to you uh, with real information, uh, no speculation. I don't go down rabbit holes. Uh, I'm grateful that you're here as part of this channel. If you're just joining our channel, thank you. We're grateful. And if you can subscribe or and share this out to your friends and families and others, uh, we're, we're grateful for that too. So signing off from Salida, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Uh, Dahlia, thank you so much. Uh, Dialog James, we are grateful for that as well. So have a good day. Uh, you guys rock. Uh, I'll uh, report back in uh, as we uh, start putting some other pieces together. Okay, so stay tuned. Uh, this is going to get good. I can guarantee it. Thanks, guys. See you in a bit.